Hi, welcome to HowToStats.com. In this video, I'm going to perform a factorial ANOVA. And I'm going to be performing uh, probably the simplest case of a factorial ANOVA, actually the, the second simplest factorial ANOVA possible, in that I've got only between subjects uh, designed variables, rather than a combination of between subjects and repeated measures, or within subjects designs, uh, which is known as a split plot ANOVA, uh, or a mixed design ANOVA, and I've got another video on that. Uh, so this is actually only, this has two levels, just like the split plot ANOVA, but both of them are between subjects uh, factors. Now, in this case, I've got one variable, independent variable, one factor that is called gender, so it has two levels. And the other variable, the other independent variable I'm interested in has three levels, and that's job category. And the three job category levels are uh, clerical, custodian, and manager. And they're uh, labeled one, two, and three. And for gender, uh, males are one and females are two. Now my dependent variable is salary. Uh, so it's a interval ratio variable. Ra it's actually a ratio variable because there is a meaningful zero point. Uh, but nobody in this data set has this annual salary of zero. Uh, in fact, this is the lowest uh, salary point, 19,650. Now in this uh, two by three design, factorial design ANOVA, I'm going to test the main effects, and I'm also going to test the interaction. So there's, there's a hypothesis related to the main effect of gender. Do males and females earn the same amount of money? And then there's a main effect for job category. Do uh, managers, custodians, and, and clerks earn the same amount of money? And then there's the interaction. Does the magnitude of the difference between either genders depend in part upon the job category that they're, that they're working in. So I'm going to test all three of those hypotheses, the main effect for gender, main effect for job category, and then the interaction. And I'm also going to follow it up with some post hoc testing, but I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about post hoc testing. I'm going to do the simplest post hoc, post -hoc testing uh, possible. Uh, which is defensible in this case, as I'll talk about in, in a few minutes. So, uh, to perform this uh, factorial ANOVA, uh, you go into Analyze, General Linear Model, Univariate, and put your dependent variable into the dependent variable list. There's only an option, you can only fit one dependent variable at a time. And then you put your two independent variables most likely in the fixed factors box. Now I'm not going to talk a lot about the difference between fixed factors and random factors except to say that in 99.9% .9 of cases you're probably dealing with an independent variable that is a fixed factor. And very briefly what that means is that you did not randomly sample the levels associated with your independent variable from a population of levels. So gender, male, female, that is fixed. There's n you did not sample, I did not sample those gender levels. That's what exists, that's what my data came in as. Employment category, I'm using all three employment categories in this data set. Hypothetically, if I had 150 employment categories and I sampled 10, randomly sampled 10 levels from those employment categories, then I could possibly put that in as a random factor. But because I did not do that, I got these factors as they came in, and I didn't sample from a larger population, then you're using fixed factor. Most people use fixed factors in their research. Now the options I'm going to select, uh, I'm going to select descriptive statistics, estimates of effect size, and homogeneity tests. I think that's the that, that covers most of what you need in a, in a factorial ANOVA. There are other options if you want to learn more about your data, but I think it's probably going to take us too far to field because this video is probably going to be fairly, is going to be long enough as it is. Uh, the other option I'm going to choose is to put my factors and my interaction factor 
into the display means for, and that's estimated marginal means. These marginal means are going to be different than the descriptive statistics means because my sample sizes are unequal across my levels. And I specifically chose this data set uh, because it does have